Howdy all of you delicious people, I'm here today to review Moon Knight Season 1, Episode 1. So, for this show, it seems like we also have, not only do we have to explain what's going on in this episode, but then we also have to explain Moon Knight to people, because people may not know. Um, and really, this episode doesn't go into a perfect way to explain the character very well. It just goes on and drops us into a, another character who honestly should not have been the main focus of the first episode because there's a reason for that. Uh, so here's the thing. So for those of you that are completely caught off guard by this episode, I would probably recommend people going on and seeing a YouTube video called All New, All Different Moon Knight uh, with a YouTuber called Comics Explained. And Comics Explained will go on and explain the whole history of this character within one video. And will go on and explain the fact that Stephen Grant is one personality out of... Uh, a guy who is to actually be called Mark Spector. And Mark Spector should have actually been the guy to be in this first episode, but instead we, uh, tended, we uh, tend in this first episode to focus on Stephen Grant's personality from within Mark Spector. Because we find out that Mark Spector is to have multiple personalities and we may find out that uh, Mark may go on and have another personality possibly in another one of these episodes. I'm not quite sure yet if they're just sticking with both Mark and Steven or if they're going to go on and do like Jake Lockhart who or, or Jake Lockley, my bad, uh, who of course is a cab driver. Uh, and that of course is one of Mark's uh, personalities. Mark. Uh, Mark is to be a millionaire. And so it's kind of weird for Mark to have also these personalities that don't quite make sense to me. That um, it seems uh, we have these two other guys that just have these common jobs. But then Mark is to be this like rich guy. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out or understand really the connection of it all. But we really have a very fascinating first episode of Moon Knight. But a lot of people may leave this episode dissatisfied because they might go on and have none of this really be explained to them as far as understanding Moon Knight. So if we don't already have... Mark Spector consistently talking to Stephen Grant within this episode, we have another entity that is to be called an Egyptian god called Khonshu, who of course you see as a very mum mummified thing standing behind uh, Stephen in one of these episodes with this kind of staff. And of course the very bird like a uh, character that we keep seeing popping up within this first episode that of course is Conchu. And so we have both Mark who of course sounds just like Steven. And then we also have Conchu who is also talking within Steven's brain. So it may be very confusing. And so I hope I can kind of try and clear some of this up for the first episode. Because some people may be very confused. So, here's the thing. So, Mark Spector should have actually been the main focus here. Because Mark Spector is to have gone on and gotten his power from the Egyptian god Khonshu. And so... Really, if you go on and you read up on all new, all different Marvel, you can possibly understand that. Or, like, I would just go on and just try to uh, go on to 
like Moon Knight Explained or something like that. There's there's quite a bit, uh, interestingly enough, about Moon Knight through a number of different people. And But I would really go for Comics Explained. Like, he tends to have a lot of things. Uh, but also, Comics ex comics Historian tends to have a lot of stuff also. Uh, so check both of them out. Uh, but also let me know if you're a comic book person and... Uh, you cover a lot of this stuff, let me know also, because there's comic drakes and all kinds of characters that eventually go on and do certain YouTube channels that really tend to cover a thick amount of uh, comic book stuff. So I usually just go to Comics Explained because it's just easier to explain that name. Uh, so let's go on and explain this episode to people. So we find Stephen Grant, who again, personality from Mark Spector. Stephen Grant is to be a man who sleepwalks. Come to find out this guy has an assortment of things within his apartment that is to have him realize if he of course is sleepwalking or not and so Stephen of course is to be this guy that uh things aren't really going right for him uh it seems like he's always in trouble at his job where he is to go on and do this inventory for this uh for this museum or for this gallery because uh, of course the gallery of course is called National Art Gallery my bad so we have we have Stephen here who once he is to go on further and further to this episode we start to have Stephen who wakes up in a place that he is completely unfamiliar with and is mixed up with characters that he does not know. All of a sudden having Steven be forced to fight his way out of a place or against a person of which that he, he does not really know how to. Uh, because of course we have consistently where Kanchu is saying that Mark desperately needs to wake up and kind of take over so that way Mark can fight his way out of this whole uh, event against all these men so they can survive this because Stephen, who is kind of this idiot or is kind of this wimp, uh, is to not have the skills to be able to fight his way through a number of these people. So... Maybe in episode two, we might be able to see the Mark side of this whole entire episode, which would be really fascinating to just kind of see like a rerun of all these events, but through the, uh, the telling of Mark and possibly how Mark was to go on and get uh, the golden scarab that of course was to be from Conchu, so that way Mark can go on and become Moon Knight and fight against uh, really uh, possibly either Arthur Hero or the servants of Seth, if that ever is to be a, a tying into this uh, book, but it feels like a lot of like servant of Seth kind of thing. But we have Arthur Hero who is to tie into the God of Amet, who is to be this, like alligator uh egyptian god and so immediately in my brain i'm like well servant of seth and like people who are like praising amat isn't that one and the same thing <laughs> like i guess they just like um omit um but like isn't that like one and the same like aren't they basically doing the same thing um, but it feels like they're doing a lot of retconning here. They're making characters a lot more important. Because Arthur Hero, uh, if you go into the comic books, very short run, 
and even the run that he had in the comic books isn't the exact same as in the the show here like uh basically arthur hero in the comic books is just some scientist person who is to experiment on people and isn't the same whatsoever of this of the show so even if you go and you research arthur hero you may not get the same guy and you'll be like what the heck is going on why can't i find a arthur hero that fits exactly like the show because even Comics Explained would go on and be like, yeah, this is the only Arthur Hero that I know about. <laughs> like, so it feels like this show is taking a lot of liberties. And so at some point, we're probably going to, like, see if they come up with any other Moon Knight villains. Uh, I know a lot of people are desperately hoping uh, that they're going to do some unique things with this show. Uh, and Arthur Hero isn't just going to be, like, the only thing going on. Um, but this is a miniseries. There isn't a lot, uh, to push out. And especially if every episode is like 40 some odd minutes, like, man, they're really not going to get a lot done here. Um, but I don't know. I'm very fascinated. I'm very interested about this show much more so than any other Disney plus show that has been out yet. So a lot of people will immediately be asking me, it's like, well, Hey, like really how good is this show? Because a lot of people would probably immediately go on like, God, this show is garbage. I didn't like it. I hated it. Whatever. I would go on and say that I'm very intrigued and very fascinated about this. But I also kind of feel disappointed. Because <laughs> it's like, well, wait a minute. Like, the Moon Knight part is what we really wanted. And we, like, really didn't exactly, like, that didn't exactly pay out in this first episode. Because um, it feels like we got everything else but that. Until the very uh, until the very end of this episode. So really, it's just kind of like I'm hoping that every single episode isn't a clickbaiting thing. Because really, I would want to just go on and have this show like be similar to some iteration of Moon Knight that I'm probably much more familiar with, which is really just uh, the Moon Knight from All New, All Different. So we'll, we'll see how these episodes kind of play out to be. Um, but also I was hoping for something that uh, is going to be like, wow, like, like everyone is just going to be so amazed by this character and blown away. And people are just gonna, like clamoring for more Moon Knight because... Uh, a lot of people already are probably just like, meh, like, I, I don't like this character. Like, it's not what I thought it was going to be. Um, so, with that said, uh, let's double five this bad boy up. And let's just go into spoilers because I went out and, like, talked for, about this for 13 minutes. So... Uh, hopefully I kind of explain this show and I, like, I feel like right now I'm at a positive, uh, thumbs up thing for the show. Uh, I'm much more fascinated. I'm very curious about the show and see, seeing where it goes, uh, much more so than I was with other, uh, Disney plus stuff. Uh, so, uh, like, let's hope to kind of get more, uh, intrigued by what kind of plays out here. So... Let's go on to that double five. Let's otherwise say it's about that time to just go on into spoiler time. It's spoiler time. It's about the time we can spoil this episode. So the very beginning of this episode, we have it where Stephen is to wake up and is in London. Stephen, of course, uh, is uh, to unlatch this uh, ankle <laughs> chain that he is to have on his leg because I guess Stephen is a sleepwalker. Going on and putting a bunch of sand right next to his bed to see if he was to go on and get out of this, uh, this attachment that was on his leg and to see if he moved it all. Every single thing that he puts inside of his room... Uh, or his apartment, is to see if at all 
that Stephen was to move during the night because I guess Stephen is to be a sleepwalker. So in the early part of this episode, we have Stephen who is calling his mother. And so with like the rushing way that Stephen is to technically like call his mother on this phone, I'm not really sure if Steven is actually talking to somebody. It seems like he's talking so fast that um, he's going on and calling his mother to talk about uh, him going on to take his fish on a vacation. But considering his fish only has one fin, uh, that... Uh, Steven is realizing that this fish may not uh, be able to, to get around much with only one fin. So, Steven is going on and talking about work and, and, uh, and going on to, of course, work. So, he's going on to this bus and because he doesn't have a license is what he says in a part of this episode. So, Steven is to make his way, of course, to the National Art Gallery, where he is to work as a, uh, a overnight stalking uh, guy. Here's the one thing immediately in this very first episode that honestly does not make sense to me, uh, is in one part of this episode, we have Steven that is going on and... Uh, with this one device clicking on all these items and I don't really understand what exactly Steven is doing because is he price checking all these items? <laughs> is he buying all of them? Because really with this device you would go on and you would scan all these items and you would ring them all up. So I'm a little confused what Steven is doing in uh, a part of these Part of this episode where he's behind the register going on and clicking on all these things because like for an overnight stalker like what exactly is he doing um or an inventory guy uh so we of course go on and immediately have it where steven after talking to the security guard is to bump into Donna and so all of a sudden Donna is to go on and give him this inventory that he is to uh no wait 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 Stephen goes on and is to make his way into the art gallery and he bumps into this one girl who of course is uh, to uh, put gum into the Great uh, Pyramid of Giza. And so to try and get this girl from wrecking one of their displays, we have it where uh, Stephen is going on pulling this girl aside and teaching her something, teaching her about... Uh, that these Egyptian coffins would go on and have these certain people who were to pull out through uh, through using this one device all of a human's organs with the exclusion of their heart. And this girl is like, well, why would they do that? And so Stephen is to mention that they keep the heart in there so that way they can go on and seek out judgment and the afterlife. So... This girl is mentioning to Steven, it's like, well, like, uh, like, did they pull out everything in your heart? And Steven is like, well, no, because I'm not dead. So it, it, I'm hugely paraphrasing here. But uh, anyways, Steven is to bump into Donna. And so Donna is to have all these boxes that kind of resemble one of the early Moon Knight uh, like kind of batterings that he used to have in the early comic books, like the boxes that he's kind of holding here. So 
Donna is to go and take Stephen uh, to this inventory room. And Stephen is to start to mention some inaccuracies that, like, these things are to have. That there actually is uh, nine Egyptian gods and not seven. And Donna makes the joke about, like, well, like, I fired the other two. And so it's like, what does it really matter? Like, there's times when a lot of this art gallery seems heavily inaccurate and none of it really makes sense. Like Egyptian hippos and all these kind of goofy little things that more and more Stephen is to realize how inaccurate a lot of this stuff is that makes no sense. So... Stephen is to be at one point behind this register, and so we have this girl named Dylan who is asking Stephen, it's like, well, are we still on for Friday night? And Stephen's like, Friday night, what are you talking about? And Dylan's like, well, yeah, like you and me are going to have steaks together, and Stephen is like, okay, so... All of a sudden, Dylan walks off, and Donna's like, hey, like, I didn't know that you were uh, going on and, and dating women and stuff like that. And Steven's like, well, I didn't think I was either. So, all of a sudden, we, of course, have uh, Stephen, of course, who is very confused. And, but he's like, hey, if something is working out, I guess something is working out. So, Stephen, of course, is to realize that this date is on Friday. And so, I guess it's going to be like 7 o'clock on a Friday. So, Stephen is like, oh, okay, well, I guess like uh, I'll just uh, go on and have uh, this girl's number and eventually I'll, like, I'll call her and, like, see what's what. Because what ends up happening is that after Stephen is to kind of finish up with his job, he is to go on and talk to this golden uh, statue that doesn't talk back. But it's just some guy just kind of standing there in a pause. And he, like... Steven is continuing to carry on a conversation with a guy that just stands there because sadly just Steven doesn't have any friends and that's the thing that I like about this character the most. That like we don't have this guy coming from an already like uh like Avengers movie or we're not we're not having this guy uh who is to have a number of Asgardians that were to have at some point either been uh, his family or his friend or whatever. We just have this loner guy that is to eventually just be so in desperation to hope that his life is going to turn out or turn around at some point that this guy may really just be crazy and none of this stuff is really happening. So... We have Stephen that goes home and is listening to this uh, recording on his phone called Stay Awake. So Stephen here is going and playing uh, with this Rubik's Cube one-handed. And he's also going on and reading through these books about all this Egyptian stuff because... Really, Stephen at one point wants to go on and be a tour guide and doesn't want to just go on and do inventory all of his life. But since Stephen is to just not is to just not really be like the best worker, he's just kind of relegated to inventory. So Stephen goes on and is to continue to try and stay awake uh, so that way he won't sleepwalk and he's listening to all these chapters about staying staying awake doing all these things to kind of keep him busy and 
all of a sudden he wakes up in this environment that he is just really like not understanding really where he is going on realizing that his jaw is just uh seemingly uh like something that he has to pop back in place looking around and spotting that there are two men outside this building that are shooting at him and so we have Conchu that is telling like Steven like oh like we have like the idiot is back like the Mark, wake up. Like, this guy is going to get killed. So, all of a sudden, we have Steven who's realizing these guys are not only waving at him as he's waving back because he's oblivious, he doesn't know what's going on. All of a sudden, these guys start to whip out guns, and so now Steven is realizing he's going to have to run for his life. And so, Steven is to run into this town where all of a sudden... We, of course, have a ton of people that are all grouping up in this town to be judged by Arthur Haro. And Arthur Haro is to uh, be tied to the Egyptian god of Amit, uh, who is this alligator god. And so Arthur Haro, in the very beginning of this episode, is to be the guy who is to drink this glass and is to break this glass with this uh, alligator stick and is to put all this glass in his shoes and walk around, I guess, as punishment to even the scales of uh, uh, things that eventually, I guess, he will do at some point. So, Arthur here is... Going and spotting a number of people that are in this town that desperately want to go on and align themselves with Arthur Hero and possibly become one of the people who are to praise Amit and is to uh, kind of be one of the soldiers in uh, Arthur Hero's army. So... We have Arthur who is going on and taking one person and is to put their hands out uh, kind of like, like, like this, but in reverse, to kind of connect them together. And then he is to put this uh, alligator stick in between their hands and he's to rock it back and forth. And he, of course, to have his tattoo go on and tell them if this is a person that he can align himself with. Or a person that he will kill off. So Arthur all of a sudden is getting this one man and immediately this guy is a good man and they hug it out and this guy is gonna align himself with Arthur. So we have another we have another woman who is to be this elderly lady that is to go and seek judgment, and Arthur is to rock uh the stick back and forth, and so we realize that this woman is to be not worthy of Arthur Hero, And so immediately while Arthur is to touch this woman, he, I'm assuming, sucks the life out of her and kills her, and she falls over dead. So now all of a sudden we are we have Arthur's, uh, we have one of Arthur's men mentioning that, uh, of course, someone had taken this golden... Uh, scarab and more than likely he's still here in town so we of course have Arthur Hero that is to say something in Egyptian which of course to drop everybody down to the ground except for Stephen because he doesn't know what's going on and immediately we have Hero here that realizes like oh I know you like I've seen you before and Steven is like, what are you talking about? Like, I work as a, like, I work as a gift shop guy in London. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, uh, like, uh, so we have Arthur Hero who asked Stephen for this, uh, this golden scarab, like deliver this to me. And so 
Khonshu is telling Steven, do not give this to him. Do not. So we have Steven desperately trying to give this to Arthur, but Arthur, for one reason or another, is to clutch his hand closed or is to not really give this to this guy. And it gets to the point where all of the followers of Arthur are to grab on to Steven and just haul him away to probably beat him down to then take this from him. But all of a sudden, Steven is to change back to Mark, and we eventually just see the aftermath out of that from Steven to go on and realize that Mark had gone on and killed a bunch of people, and then Steven had w woken back up, and uh, of course... Uh, Conchu is like, oh my god, this guy again? <laughs> or he has, like, some, like, I'm paraphrasing, but, like, Conchu does not want Steven. He wants Mark. Uh, so we're possibly going to figure out that maybe since Steven could not sleep, maybe that's the reason why Mark is to consistently be falling asleep during this mission. And maybe that's why Steven is, uh, is awake during this mission, because uh, Steven was having problems sleeping. So, because it just kind of takes this one kind of thing for uh, all of a sudden us to go on and try to uh, really possibly understand what's really going on. Like, this show kind of reminds me of my own worst enemy, like the Christian Slater show. Uh, so, like, that's the kind of thing that kind of fascinates me about this. Is like, oh, okay, so this is kind of like the Christian Slater, my own worst enemy, or uh, kind of any number of those shows where we kind of have this, like, kind of sleeper agent-like thing um, where this character is to have, like, multiple personalities and stuff like so it's kind of it's a really interesting show to me but i don't know a lot of people probably not like it but that's okay uh so all of a sudden we go on and we now have it where steven is scrambling onto this vehicle and he's like i don't even know why i'm driving because i don't even have a license so steven is to have this cupcake vehicle and he's driving and all of a sudden we have it to where it's like consistently in and out of consciousness with steven because Conchu is consistently wanting to have Mark be here instead of Steven. So Mark all of a sudden is to wake up at points and kill some people and take them down. And so when Steven wakes up, he realizes the aftermath of this, how a number of people are dead. And so he's very confused. And then Steven will go back to sleep and then Mark will go on and do all these action events. And then Steven will wake up. And realize that his car is backwards and that all of a sudden like Steven has to go on and do all these maneuvers and try to uh, get around this whole truck and so it's a whole ordeal here so Steven is to go on and after all this happens, he is to wake up in his bed thinking that this whole thing is a dream. So, Stephen then goes on and is to go to work like everything's normal. And before he does, he realizes that, uh, that his fish, who only had one fin, now weirdly has two. And so Stephen goes to, uh, to of course this uh, pet shop owner, and is to kind of like, hey, like this fish only had one fin, now it has two, and the the pet owner is like, well, hey, like, sorry, like uh, I don't sell defective fish, <laughs> so. Steven has realized what time it is, and so he goes on to his date and is to call this girl who is Dylan, and she says that Friday was two days ago where she ate steak alone, and today is actually Sunday. And so Steven's like, what the heck? 
I've been gone for... <laughs> I've been gone for a number of days, like today's Sunday, and so Stephen is to reconfirm with his waiter what day it is, and he mentioned Sunday, and he's like, oh my god, I've missed, like, days, and I don't know what's going on. So Stephen is to just order this steak because he is just so confused and just so, like, he is so, his mind is just burnt at this point. So... He goes on the very next day to work, and all of a sudden, we have Steven, who is consistently seeing uh, Conchu here, who continues to just appear and appear and appear. And because we also have a moment where Steven is at his place, and he is to realize that there are markings on his on his floor of his apartment and he adjusts this table to go on and find this hidden cell phone and this key and so steven is to call this number and a woman called layla is to be calling the cell phone and steven's like well hey i just found this phone in my flat like who are you and Layla, of course, is saying to Steven, it's like, hey, I've been calling you for months. Like, what's going on? So, <laughs> Steven, of course, is, like, very confused. And Layla is saying, like, well, why are you, like, why do you sound like you have an accent now? This seems very weird. So, all of a sudden... Steven is to lose connection with Layla for the, from this phone. And so all of a sudden we have Mark who's talking to Steven in this room, telling him to stop looking, stop uh, trying to like figure things out. Having Mark going on through this mirror and tell him to stop, stop what he's doing. So Steven starts freaking out going into this elevator and this elevator is to start having him see Conchu, and Steven is freaking out even more. Just very confused, to the point of one person going into this elevator who wants to see some relative of hers on one of these floors. is just like, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and see this, this relative of mine. It's like, hey, like, see you later. <laughs> like, Because she's wigged out by this guy. Uh, so... Steven is to make his way to work. And so when he makes his way to work, he's talking to the security guard and he's telling him, it's like, well, hey, just don't let anybody into this museum because, uh, like, there might be some shady characters. And the security guard is like, okay, sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Steven, like, this museum is free. Like, we can't, like, we can't just stop letting people in. So... All of a sudden, Steven is to be seen by Donna. She, again, tosses him freight to take care of. And so, Steven is at some point going on and making his way through this museum. And all of a sudden, he is met by Arthur Perot. And he's like, oh, so you do work here. And so, Steven is like, hey, like, security guard Ronnie, like, uh, help me, and we find out that security guard is actually praise a mitt, and then we go on and find a number of people at this museum are all, like, working with Arthur Hero. So, now Arthur is to go on and is to try and measure the scales of Stephen, and is to try to figure out whether Stephen is going to align himself with Arthur or whether Stephen possibly has to get killed or maybe that the scales will never even up with, uh, with Stephen here. So Arthur is to mention that he is connected, uh, of course, with uh, Amit. Uh, and so... He admits this and goes on and he, 
we have, I think, either Steven mentioning that this is a, uh, like, some kind of boogeyman for evildoers. And so we have it where, like, where Arthur is just like, well, like, it's, like, somewhat similar, like, similar to that. So... We have Arthur explaining who he is, who he's tied to, and everything like that. So we then have Arthur, who is kind of clicking the scales against Stephen. And so Arthur here is to realize that Stephen is to possibly be like chaos. And so we get to where in the later part of this, where it starts to become Nightfall that Stephen, of course, is going on and realizing that there is some animal within this, uh, this art gallery. And so he goes on and he is here, this animal, and he's like, well, wait a minute, like, when do we have animals in this place? And so Arthur is going on and checking what this animal is to possibly take care of it, if that's really what he is to desperately need to do. So... All of a sudden, we have Arthur, who is to possibly be presented with this monster of some kind that is chasing after him within this place, forcing him to go on and toss these items for this, uh, like, Anubis-looking uh, entity to try to take over uh, whatever item uh, Stephen is to chuck here. To basically mean that it's going to attack whatever he chucks. So, Stephen, of course, is looking through these items, seeing these vases, knocking things over accidentally, but grabs it before it falls. So, Stephen is running his way through this museum, knocking shelves over, desperately going on into this bathroom, where this Anubis-like uh, entity, which I'm wondering is the servant of Seth, or if it's possibly just some other uh, kind of Anubis like God creature that is just to go up against Moon Knight uh, temporarily for this episode. So, like, we have like possibly certain Egyptian God like uh, entities that are just going and trying to attack uh, really just uh, Moon Knight here. Because what happens is while this door is getting scratched through, Mark is to, in desperation, talk to Stephen and is to tell him here that, hey, you need to give up. Uh, you need to, to let me, like, take over so I can help you. Not only saving you, but also saving me. Like, let's go on and have me just kind of take over so I can help you because you're going to die otherwise. So Stephen, who realizes that this thing is coming for him, lets go of being the main personality here. And so Mark takes over. And then so Mark takes over as the Moon Knight character and is to go on and take down this Anubis looking uh, creature. And we end up just seeing kind of Moon Knight for a very glimpse moment as his face gets closer and closer to the screen and then the episode just ends. <laughs> and so I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like, that's all we get of Moon Knight? <laughs> so all we get is the other characters for a while and then like maybe in other episodes we'll get more of Moon Knight? But that just seems kind of goofy and kind of a very weird setup. Uh, but maybe another inter maybe in other episodes we may start getting to see other versions of Moon Knight. It seems like they keep showing in other images like different variations of Moon Knight. And so maybe, maybe it'll get to where all of a sudden multiple different uh, personalities of Moon Knight will go on and give us multiple different uh, versions of Moon Knight, which would kind of be really cool uh, to showcase in the show. But again, this is so early. This is only one episode. 
Uh, I don't want to go on and say like, oh, this is going to happen. And then it never does. Uh, because now, since I know what this show is going to present and how possibly we may leave with us not, not really scratching the surface of this character and a lot of people might get frustrated or disappointed about the show, uh, which I'm hoping we won't because I wasn't like, I was just like, okay, I already understand this character. And so I was just kind of intrigued by whatever story was to be laid out in front of me. Uh, so I thought that this show was fascinating. Um, and really, I want to go on and like see more. Like I kind of wish that they would have gone on like any other, <laughs> any other Marvel show and would have gave us two episodes. I think that would have made a lot more sense. Uh, simply because we don't know this character as much as say like WandaVision or Loki or whatever. I think this should have this should have been a much bigger series than a lot of those other things because you have to kind of take time to help us understand this character where any other of these people have their own origin stories and have their own back uh history stuff to where you don't need um their origin story you don't need like a history of them because there's already a number of movies that have already done that for you so yeah, so with that said, I'm going to get out of here. I've already taken too long to review this episode, but I thought I would go out of my way to talk about this because a lot of people uh, may go on and just be like, well, what the f is up with this Moon Knight? I'm, I'm not quite, I don't really get it. So with that said, really for a lot of people, yeah, I would say uh, check out a lot of comic book stuff uh, to really understand this character a little bit better. Um, and I know a lot of people are like, well, why can't I just have a show that explains it? Because I think a lot of people just naturally assume, uh, and I guess this show does too, that uh, everybody is just comic book nerds and they will just look all this stuff up. Uh, especially with how long it took for this show uh, to do teasers and do all this stuff, a lot of people just naturally assume people would be Googling and, and YouTubing and figuring everything out about this character. Or there's probably a reason why this show is out because they figured that there are a lot of Moon Knight fans, especially uh, from how uh, all knew all different Moon Knight was a big, uh, a big thing, especially for me to be interested in the character. So with that said, I'm going to get out of here. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody. One thing I forgot about. Uh, there was a second call from Steven's mother where Steven goes on and after the whole date is over, he goes on and he calls his mother and mentions that like the date went well and maybe at some point uh steven is gonna go on and have dylan come home to his mom uh so he can kind of uh have his ma check her out and which is also just kind of telling of like is he really talking to somebody or is he not talking to somebody um because he goes on to talk to people who aren't talking back. And so, like, are we just getting to some kind of conclusion, conclusion that really Steven is burnt out here? Uh, burnt out to an absurd degree. So, Steven then is to go on to have this box of chocolates. And he continues to eat a bunch of them until he drops them on the ground and realizes that there is the scratches that are on this ground uh, of his apartment room leading or his apartment leading him to go on and find that cell phone with the with the keys so i forgot about that whole kind of moment there that whole transition but other than that uh pretty much most of it is pretty uh hopefully mostly uh talked about within this episode but it was kind of like one little uh thing that i've forgotten about so bye everybody bye everybody